This is what I said about strategically placed aid. <laughs> Stitch up for sure, you sit here. Me and Abby got it, we got it. We got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we Hey guys, welcome to the 10th episode. Is the 10th episode this week? Is it 10? I don't know. I think it's 10. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds great. 10 episodes. Uh, today we've got two special guests as Link as always. So we've got Michael Messina from Bounce Back Physio and we've got Brad Soper from School Strong. So I'll put, uh, I'll put their Instagram <laughs> handles above their heads and, um, and I'll also put in their details down below the video as well. So welcome boys. Thank you. It's good to be here again. <laughs> yeah, round two for you. We've got the callback. Yeah, call Hollywood next. <laughs> Must have done something right. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. We'll still, still on eggshells though. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see how we go today. Uh, let's dive into the questions. So we'll go into the very first one. Uh, hey guys, in a few of your episodes you mentioned the importance of both stability and mobility. What would you say is more important and is there one I should be focusing on more to help improve my training and reduce the risk of injury? Ability and stability. Balance. Balance That's is it too. Yeah, it's a both. It's both. You can't have one without the other. Yeah, definitely. It, dep and then it depends on what you're training. Mm. Um, if you're looking at, you know, um, so if you're squatting in that, you don't want to have too much mobility in terms of through that movement. You want to have the mobility to achieve a, yeah. a, a good movement, if that makes sense. But you want to be able to have enough stability to have to stabilize when you're in that you know, high load bearing position so that you're not getting too much movement and then you're stressing different parts of the joint or different parts of other joints and yeah. overloading. So I think it's, it's a bit hard. Um, yeah, it, it really depends on, on, on what you're looking at and what you're trying to achieve. Um, it sounds like they've probably been told they either have too much of one or not enough of the other. So probably a little bit more of a focused, um, yeah, a little bit more of a focus on, on what the specific uh, exercises that they're struggling with in terms of either of those and then targeted um, corrective exercises to, to improve that. And that takes time. It takes time. There's no, there's no correct answer there. Mm. It just depends. Everyone's different and yeah, it just depends on a lot of other things. How long they're training for, what they're doing, how much they're lifting. Yeah. Yeah. Lifestyle factors, we could go. Yeah, yeah. So no I, black and white. No, I wouldn't say so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think yeah, each joint requires mobility and stability. So it's you can't really take one without the other. Definitely. Yeah. And different joints are different. Yeah, like shoulders are very mobile. Yeah, and that's it's 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 a great thing that's so mobile because we can do a whole heap of things. We can you know maneuver it so well. But then that mobility it needs yeah. uh, You have a decrease in stability. stability yeah. So it's it's you know it's symbiotic. You need both. Um, so I think yeah, each joint is different. So again, it's very dependent on what we're looking at. Um, but yeah, balance. So I didn't really answer it, but you kind of do. Yeah. 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 That's why I go with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like you said, like there's, like there's no distinct, definite answer no. based on. I think if you're looking for a definite answer, like that's where people like Michael and Brad and stuff will come in. Individual assessment. That's yeah, right. exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a, each person's different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, a lot of mobility in the interior chain will decrease stability. Like, mm. there's, there's no definitive answer. Like mm. said. It's just a case by case mm. situation. And then um, if, if you don't know, prefer it out. You know, it's, it's where the point is there. So, and until someone looks at it, it's like someone in a trainer program. You tell me what I'm doing wrong. So, I can't. Yeah. yeah. You have to see the whole picture. So, yeah. Um, you need both. It's that simple. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. And one normally inhibits the other sometimes. Yeah. So you need to be assessed. Mm. Do you suggest doing some kind of cool down after a session, like walking or stretching, um, similar to having a warm up, but at the end? Cool downs. Same thing. It's always going to be, it depends. It depends where you're at. It depends on how much time you've got, you know what I mean? Mm. And it all depends on how stressed you are as well. Um, and what's your focus, what's your goal? So it's of piece of string. Yeah. All these questions are. It but I think sometimes yeah. the best thing to do with answers like this is give them the why you would do it. Yep. And then they can decide for themselves yeah. if it fits them. So basically the reason for a cool down basically is to try and get back in parasympathetic as quick as you can, try and reduce your stress levels. So basically anyone that's in the higher sort of stress person or, or people that are dealing with a lot of stress on the outside, it's perfect for them, you know what I mean? Um, anyone that sort of seizes up or lights stiff is good for them but also, but they're not just going from hot, um, mobilised in the workout and then going to sit in a cold car yeah. and for an hour or something driving. So yeah. that's, that's the benefits of maybe doing these things, um, especially cool downs and stretches uh, post-workout. Mm. So if they can understand why the benefit is, then they can make the assessment on themselves whether they're going to apply it. And I think gradually reducing that heart rate, especially if they had a high cardio session, gradually reducing that heart rate, getting it down, like you said, down to a, you know, your normal levels, it avoids that drop. Yeah, and so that drop, affects yeah. your systemic so much differently. So I think that's 
that's supposed to be the most important thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I'm getting uh, I'm getting pain in my shoulders when I'm doing an overhead press. Is it because I'm lifting too heavy, or is it something else? So vague. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can it's, be both, right? Yeah. The pain's yeah. there because the stability's not there. So yeah. obviously yeah. it's too heavy for where you're at at the moment. Yeah. But why there's no stability? Mm. Another piece of string. Mm. Yeah. Um, but you know yourself normally any pain in the shoulders, try and avoid overhead pressing until. Yeah, overhead movements. Yeah, overhead yeah. Overhead movements. Yeah. yeah, I think overhead press is a really good example of another um, good compound movement. So you have a look at it's not just the shoulders that you're looking at. Probably have a look at the thoracic spine. Yeah. And if you're too stiff or, or too loose in that area, it comes back to that mobility and stability, you know, argument. Um, you're going to overload your shoulders through external rotation. I think we spoke about a similar thing last time I was on about you know your bench press and you know not having that stability and, and overloading your external uh, your rotator cuff. Similar things there. If you if you're lifting too heavy, you're not stabilising enough. or you're not understanding the movement. I know. When, I started training with you. Yeah. I had no idea yeah. what the overhead press was. I'll be yeah. honest, you know, and I was really struggling with it. So it took me a lot of a long time to yeah. to get through it. Um, sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah. Um, so probably I think having a look at your, your training load and, and your understanding of the movement and the correct yeah. movement would be important. And then having a look at you know other things. So maybe doing a, a extension, like thoracic extension, and, and getting that improved and, and that. And then having a look at you know, scapular stability as well. So yeah. yeah. And is it is it pain near unloaded? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like what, how much does your movement pattern change from yeah. light loaded yeah. to then you get some maximum and maximum? Like, do you yeah. want to suddenly start bringing the scalp out once it's arm fully loaded? Yeah. So that just points to that. You, you've got to build stability back in the, in the correct movement pattern yeah. um, that you want to perform at. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Um, hi, squad club coaches and guests. What keeps you motivated? I find that with the world of social media, it means that everyone is constantly comparing to others um, that are fitter, stronger, and better looking. What motivates you guys? <laughs> I, I, I do it because it's fun, but I, I actually really enjoy doing it. Like, I, I look forward to it. Um, and that feeling that you get when, once you're done when you're walking out, like the whole of responsibility, I guess. Um, like, I really love that. So, I guess it's not really hard for me personally to be motivated because it's something I do actually enjoy. So, um, and yeah, like, I do it for like my own results. So, I'm never really comparing myself to others. Like, because everyone is so different. Like, you can't compare yourself to others. You know, so. I actually enjoy it today. So. Mm. Oh, we're going around. Yeah, yeah we're going around. Okay. Um, for the benefits of it, um, and same as what Steve said, I do it for myself, so not to compare to anyone else. Um, I like feeling strong, I like um, what it na- enables me to do in life, so it just makes life easier from a health perspective and the benefits, so I find it easy to stay motivated in that sense. Um, Plus, I got a lot of uni work on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still motivated to train. Yeah. It's just my It makes you feel good. So, yeah. 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 It's not like I'm demotivated. Yeah. So, yeah. I think uh, to answer the question, I guess, with that, social media is, it, it can be very negative, especially in the industry where something's meant to be so supportive. Um, where training gives you the other option of it is, the comparison is to yourself every day. So training is one thing that actually gives you an opportunity to be better every day. It doesn't matter what else goes around in, in your circle, around in life, or whatever it is. If you come in, you can move a bit more weight, do a couple extra reps, you're always going to improve yourself. Um, in that aspect of training. So if you could remove yourself from the social media world and not compare and go, look, I'm getting better every day. It's, it's actually one thing in life that there's no comparison to that can give you that opportunity. Um, and you stick to that, that will keep you motivated. For myself, I just enjoy the challenge that I can, the limits that people sort of set on you or you set on yourself are there to be broken or you have the opportunity to break them in your own realm. And back to the hormonal response, you start to achieve things like that. And then again, you get your goosebumps, you get your, your reward system. And all of a sudden, life's in life. The outlook yeah, becomes a lot more positive. Mm. It can set your day up from the way it goes. Yeah, I think like I think all of us will probably go around and say we enjoy it. We enjoy how it makes us feel. And at the end of the day, that's all, it's going to come down to that. But how do you find that enjoyment? Like you need to find something you enjoy. Like 100%. Brad, Brad loves doing strongman. I couldn't, if I had a strongman session, he gave me a strong set, I wouldn't fully enjoy it straight away. Yeah, come back, yeah. I wouldn't come back. And that's the whole thing. So he, like, just because everyone squats doesn't mean you have to squat. Like 100%. find something you enjoy and that's something you can adhere to over time. Like that's the biggest thing for motivation. Like as long as you're moving, I think that's the most important thing. Um, but once you find that enjoyment for it, you'll be mo- like, it's not even motivation anymore to have it. Like, you enjoy, you enjoy how it makes you feel, and it, that's what gets you showing up week in, week out. Um, rather than just like, you have to find that enjoyment first. Otherwise, because we're all going to say we enjoy it. I love it. I love training. It you makes me feel good. You've you got to find passions. what you enjoy. Like, if you just enjoy coming in here and just pushing the sled for an hour, then just go do it. Like, honestly, have fun. Like, you want to be I know. You. <laughs> <laughs> That'll chin up, so thanks. <laughs> no, oh, I, I think I see it from both. I've got, I kind of myself down the line. You know, from a, a health perspective, a health pr- 
professional point of view, you know, you see the benefits of me coming in here, I know what the results are, what I'm working towards and how good it is, the literature behind it. On the other side, I find personally, like, you know, I think the social media side of things, like whoever's asked this, um, I, like we all struggle, I struggle with that with self-confidence and, and, and body image and all that kind of stuff and I think um, it's, a, it's a hard barrier to break. It's a very hard barrier to break and um, it's the first step is always the hardest and, and getting into that. So it's, it's hard, you, you know that's good for you, you know it's hard but then you've got this, you know, this other kind of influence that really you really struggle with. I think you've just got to make that first step and I think that's what motivates me, it's that, okay, well, you know, the only way I can improve it and work on that and improve myself is by pushing myself to, to train and, and to do things that not make me uncomfortable but help me progress and that's what drives me in my career, in my personal life. Overcoming okay, the uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Success of that. Being comfortable with the uncomfortable and that's, that's something that I learned from a lot of like football and like rugby that I played and a lot of teams that I work with is you've got to, you've got to, you've got to dig hard, you've got to dig deep and you've got to push through. That's the so reward. That's, it's the reward, yeah. So that's what I do it for. Um, from a you know a physical and then a, a mental and emotional point of view as well, so that's what drives me. But mm. and I think that's what a lot of people would struggle with is that that first step and and seeing other people and you come to the gym and you see some some guy who's been training for 20 years and he looks amazing and you go, oh, you know that's not me. It doesn't matter. You know it's not about that. It's about okay, well, look at me where I started yeah. and look at me where I am now and that's amazing. You know that's that's yeah. something that you've got to look at, look internal and always compare yourself to two weeks. I say to my patients all the time, don't compare yourself to yesterday. Or, or to someone else's rehab, or someone else, someone else is doing. Compare yourself to two, what you were doing two weeks ago. Okay, so that's that's how I get through. So I think you know, what was I doing two weeks ago in my program? I couldn't lift this, and now I can. So that's how I keep myself motivated. Going. I think the first thing um, to address that question would be the social media part. Um, Instagram, Facebook is a big highlight reel. So I mean, you probably would know yourself watching that. When you go to post up a photo or a video, you know it's it's probably going to be one of the best that's in your camera roll. So you kind of got to see that as well. That um, it is it is a big highlight reel. Um, so don't look at it and try and compare yourself to others. Um, and in saying that too, that you don't know where the people that you would be comparing yourself to. You don't know what their history is and, and how long that they've been training or or whatever the, the compare, comparison is. You don't know how long that they've been doing something. So um, we are all different. Um, but like Michael just said then, like look at yourself of how you were two weeks ago, you know, instead of comparing yourself to someone else that you don't know um, their background story and you don't know how many filters and you know how many photos it took to actually get to that. So uh, I think that'll be the first part of that. Um, but and then as Luke was saying as well, just finding something that you enjoy. It doesn't even have to be the gym. You know, you could enjoy it like a sport or you know enjoy walking or. Um, or anything like that, just find something that you enjoy and then be consistent at it because over time consistency is just going to progress you, you know, and that's when results will start to come. So um, that's the biggest thing and like we said, we all we all love what we do um, and that's why we're so consistent at what we do here too. So um, find something that you love and stop comparing yourself to other people and you see on social media that it's a, it's a big highlight reel. Um, okay, next question. Uh, I find myself travelling in a car a lot for work. What would be some good choices to, to eat uh, and stay within my set calories? Are well, they driving to work? Well, if they're, they're in the car all the, most of the oh. day. <laughs> Are we writing this one down? <laughs> I think, um, you know, when it comes to in, if the lack of, um, you know, the tools that you could use, maybe look at uh, things that have if you are tracking you could have things that have uh, the nutritional value on on the packets um, it is easier then for the track as opposed to something else um, depending if you know if you wanted to have make your meals you know if you want it cold or not but um, that is I guess a bit easier because it is easier to track um, and the convenience as well if you are struggling with the time to, to make food um, or you know the time to actually eat because you are Traveling for most of the day. Beef jerky, that's two yeah. easiest ones to do. Yeah. Um, if you travel with it, it doesn't make a mess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is, yeah. If you can't prepare it, just make sure you're in, in um, serving sizes that you're not going to go over. Mm. That's the easiest one. Probably. Yeah. Dye drinks. Um, yeah. Coffee probably just nuts. have like a little bit of um, structure as well. Like if you're traveling and you have nothing for the day, mm. you're going to probably pull into a servo, pull into McDonald's, get that easy option. And if that's consistently happening, then it's obviously not going to end well for your health and um, fat loss as well. That job on Sundays, maybe. Big flyers are good. I don't like having flyers. Oh, you have chocolate on your flyers? Chocolate on Sunday, mate. Steve, yeah. like, just yeah. Steve, not too fancy. Yeah. <laughs> I might pay that one a visit. Yeah. 
after, like, after I'll put it in the background and then yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make a fit. <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate sauce is like yeah. What <laughs> you think an ace? Yeah, you got me. <laughs> I always get the large because it's like more. There's chocolate in the bottom, but if you add extra chocolate to the small, it's the same size as the large. There's your tip. <laughs> That's what we're saying. We need to cut that. That makes sense in Alright, so just say a small. I don't know if this is going to go in the video. I hope not. Just say a small. Just say a small. Small to a large here. Okay, if you go. I just said this. The chocolate sauce is really good. Anyway, if you want extra chocolate sauce to your small, and just say it's $3, it's extra 50 cents. Right. For that extra 50 cents, you can just get a large and that comes with extra sauce down the bottom and up the top. So so simple. Yeah, you beat them game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's all I got. You can choose. You can, get, you can get the Sunday and then ask for the topping of the McFlurry in there as well. Yeah, Mac, is, Mac is hacks. Yeah, you know you can just ask for a lock out, a cup, a cup of coke, and get a Sunday in that. <laughs> oh, really? No, you can't. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what? Piss that. I don't know how it ends. Sunday night. Yeah. <laughs> But it was priceless to see your face. <laughs> oh, really? I was like, isn't that a spy? Being of all yeah. possibilities. That's how much chocolate sauce could I fit in a small coat. <laughs> uh, Alright, we're going to end it there for part one of uh, today's episode. Um, we're going to be back again next week for part two because we've got a fair few questions to dive into. So if you have a question for our next episode, make sure you shoot them to our Instagram page, Squat Club AU, and we'll answer them on the next episode. I'll speak to you next week. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.